Good evening, good evening, everyone. This is this is your man, this is Father Chris Allen, and tonight I'm bringing you another if episode, another topic of the issues of men, uh, <clears throat> where we boldly approach topics that men are experiencing, but not always willing to admit or address openly. And tonight's, uh, I definitely want to apologize. I had some te technical difficulties with coming on this evening. Uh, so I definitely appreciate you uh, coming in and arriving. Um, so with that being said, let me go ahead and move forward this evening. Um, definitely thank um, everyone who's tuning in this evening. Give me one second. What's going on, Mr. Scales? How you feeling, my brother? Um, just give me one moment. I need to change pages real quick. It's something I didn't do before I got started. How you feeling? All right. Okay, here we go, here we go. All right, so with that being said, tonight's topic of conversation is um, finding out that you're not the only gay in town. And maybe you probably be saying like, well, what does it mean by that? It's just an old school expression that's basically stating that um, the woman that you have an interest in or the woman that you're dating has options. She's also dating as well. What's, go what's going on, Mr. Allen? How you feeling, brother? Good to see you, cuz. Good to see you. And uh, what it is is we're going to be talking about Absolutely, Brother Scales. Um, matter of fact, I was like, I'll give you a call this evening or uh, tomorrow, and we'll go ahead and get that handled. How you doing, Letitia? Glad you're coming in this evening on an interesting topic. So I definitely look forward to you all to, uh, you know, putting your comments in the chat this evening uh, based on finding out that you are not the only gay in town. So just from my perspective, um, and I only speak from my perspective. Uh, men are men are pursuers. We're hunters. Um, and consciously or unconsciously, um, we want to be number one, and we want to be the only one, even when we're dating. And we're going to talk about find out how men respond to women who again has their options too. And what I run into is, um, and just from my experience dealing with guys and from my own perception is, uh, the first type of guy in initially being young, this was me, I was a competitor, you know what I'm saying? I was a competitor. If there was somebody that I was interested in uh, and she was single, well, honestly, it ain't matter whether she was single or not. It, it, whoever was competing with me and what I was trying to get to. So, um, the first type of guy is the competitor. You know, he's ego driven, he's prideful. I also call him Mr. Confident. All right. So, we talk about Mr. Confident. Um, he's that, um, you know, he's that go getter. And when I say go getter, I'm breaking down go get her. So, he's going to do what he needs to do to go and get to. How you doing, Miss Monet? How you feeling? Um, he's that go-getter. And so, um, if a man is seriously interested in a woman and she's dating other men, the competition not even gonna matter. I mean, I could even say that for myself. It didn't matter. He will pursue her and he'll fight for her until the time that she says, like, nah, nah, it's, it's over. You know, I don't want to see you no more. I don't want to date you no more. I don't want nothing to do with you. Or she's taken off the market. She says, you know, uh, I found somebody else. So, you know, that's what it is. I get it. It's okay. Um, but there are some of the other, <laughs> some, some type of guys, right, that, um, Not that he's a stalker, 
or he's some type of fanatic, a crazy dude, psycho dude, or whatever like that, you know, he's normally just going to go away. He's like, okay, whatever, I, you know, I lost that battle. Um, but if a guy is really interested in a woman, regardless of she's dating, and we're talking about uh, Mr. Confident, we're talking about that competitor, we're talking about that ego, that ego spirit in us that makes us, that tries us to move forward, like, nah, that, that's me, that's mine, you know what I'm saying? So he will invest time, energy, money, and all resources that he has at his disposal to make sure that he gets her. Do you agree or not agree? Go ahead and put that response in the chat box if you agree that he's really interested in her, whether she's dating or not, that he'll uh, go ahead and, you know, he'll pursue her to no end. He'll use all his, his uh, when I say his assets, when I say his resources, I'm talking about his friends, um, relatives, her relatives, um, common friends, common relatives. Um, he'll even use manipulation, um, familiarity. Um, he'll even try to pretend um, to be the man that she's dreaming of just to have an opportunity to be with her. And that may not be him at all. You know, that's when the game plan start. Uh, that's when he'll start preying on her insecurities or her weaknesses, her vulnerabilities and things of that nature. So, um, again, this is that gentleman. This is one of the types of gentlemen that, uh, you know, um, whether that's complimenting, um, his of the flowers, gifts, whatever it takes, his whole arsenal has that his disposal uh, to have an opportunity at her, irregardless if she's dated or not, because he's like, yo, I'm, I'm going to win. I'm winning, son. I'm winning. Um, now, the second type guy in my experience that I've come across, uh, whether that was to be friends or people um, sharing some of their experiences with uh, women dating. How you doing, Eleanor? Good to see you. Good evening. Good evening, and welcome, welcome. Um, I know Eleanor. We're talking about we're talking tonight, um, an old school topic uh, that I kind of filled them in on is finding out you're not the only game in town, and I'm pretty sure that you know uh, you know you know what that is either with that degree. So, um, so the second type of guy family is again. This is this is how they respond. This is the cool guy. You know what I'm saying? You know. Um, whether he's interested or not, um, he's not going to put himself in harm's way to pursue her at all. You know what I mean? He's going to still be his cool self. He's going to go about his, going about his business and, and do it basically what he got to do. Um, he's not going to put himself in harm's way. Um, other situations have to happen um, for the relationship to jail or should have to approach him and come back to him in order for the cool dude, um, you know, for this actually to work out and take shape. And the uh, second gentleman, good evening, Aubrey. How you feeling? So before I go to the uh, third, the third type of guy, um, when he finds out that the person that he's pursuing has options too, uh, Aubrey says, "Men who chase are seldom good." Hmm. A gentleman is patient with flattery and chivalry. Like me, you know what I'm saying? I know y'all out there like that too. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a woman who doesn't go for the gentleman. Give me the rest of this. Wasn't the right one. And in my experience, I, I definitely can vouch for that like 1,000%. Um, I used to chase because that was just a common thing to do. That's what I learned how to do. Um, and although I, you know, I was a good person in the whole venture and all like that, uh, I was patient. Um, I did give a lot of flattery, a lot of compliments, and compliments got me in more places than I could ever imagine. Um, and a woman who doesn't go for the gentleman wasn't the right one exactly so you know she's on a different type of time a different type of energy and nine times out of ten it's not going to work out whether you waited for her or not 
so the other um the other guy i call him the timeless guy right so what i mean by that is that when i say timeless he ain't had no time for no games <laughs> he had time for it so whether she was dating or not or whether um, whatever she was doing this was his response let me in so he you know he didn't play no games he was uh you know, he's constantly talking about his intentions and he only wants to know if he can hit them draws. Can I get it? Can I get it? Can I get it yet? Can I get it? Can I have it yet? Can I have it yet? You know, so Mr. Timeless really didn't have time for anything else except for just that. And especially once he know that, okay, yeah, you're doing whatever. So that means that she's active. That means that she's doing whatever. So I'm, well, I want a shot too. If not, Mr. Timeless don't have time, so he's going to keep it moving. Um, Eleanor says in the chat, she says, a man who is overconfident is a turnoff. If he has the attitude, if I want you, I can have you. And um, Eleanor, you were right. Uh, most women say it's a turnoff, and there's some types of women who was like, oh, shit. Excuse my language, y'all. But it was like, oh, wow. You know, he's... Um, He's confident in himself, you know. Let, let, let me see what this is about. And so he goes into, um, it could go either way for him. And he's actually one of the people I'm going to talk about um, a little bit further down. Um, um, a little bit further down here. So another response is we have uh, to a woman who has uh, options and a man finds out. Um this is Mr. Nonchalant. This is uh, Mr. Secretive. This is the block boy. Um, the, the gangster, the grinder. And this is the player player. And I kind of rolled them up into one because they kind of respond the same. Um, so we talk about um, this gentleman pretends not to care. And if he shows any you know, anything like he does care, he definitely want to erase that or take that away with a behavior or a response or an action. Uh, they're basically saying that um, he, he don't really care one way or the other. He's more about himself. I'm about self. Um, he doesn't provide much information about himself. You might even know him by his alias. You're not gonna know him by his first name. His, 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 his uh, government a lot of those things you're not going to know about um, you know not, this is way down the line at some point and you might not know that then um, he treats her like she's not a priority he also treats her like um, uh, this gentleman never is going to talk about the future he never is going to, he's going to avoid commitment at all, at all costs. Um, he's not really going to be there for her. Um, when you talk about commitment, yeah, Kia, definitely. It's a lot of that these days. So I was like, you know, this is who he is. This is Mr. Nonchalant. This is Mr. Secretive. This is this is the uh, the, the block boy, uh, y'all call him. Uh, uh, hot boys and things like that, you'll call them, uh, you know, this is the player players. So um, he's not gonna spend much time with you. He's gonna come and go as he pleases. Um, this dude is also like the greatest um, liar. Like, dude, dude should earn an Oscar for his performances, you know. Um, but I, I figure like, performing for what? Performing for what? I mean, you're not giving anything, so why are you performing? You're not gonna get anything out of this whole situation. Um, and this type of brother does enough good things to keep yourself around. Like you all might argue, you might do X, Y, and Z in, in a dating process, you're doing whatever, but he's not gonna give you enough um, he, he, he's just going to do enough just to stay around um, 
just to say that, oh, you know, he's a good person, he's X, Y, and Z, blah, 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 blah. All right, so that's what he's going to do um, in regards to how he's going to treat your behavior. Uh, this is his normal behavior, but especially find out that you have other options as well. Like, you know, you, you get the words of this. Um, and again, um, I, I've seen it happen. I, I see it all the time. And, and um, our women fall for this a lot. They fall for this a lot. You know, oh, you know, he's a good dude, blah, 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 blah. Um, but, you know, he'll also contradict himself with his behavior patterns, the things that he do, whether, you know, he say he on his way and never show up. But then, you know, the next day he'll call or later on he'll call and he talking the excuses and it's not the third, but he does enough just to get by, just to keep you in arm's length while he still does what he does. And the next gentleman uh, that I want to talk about this evening is Mr. Vane. And this is what a little Ella, Eleanor was talking about. Eleanor was saying that Mr. Vane, like, he knows um, in his mind and heart, no matter what, He's so confident, he's so vain within himself that no woman can resist him. So, you know, he doesn't care what she does. He just knows that eventually, he usually gets what he wants and eventually he's gonna have her. She's gonna fall into his arms, you know what I'm saying? So, that's Mr. Vain. So when we talk about the other individual I wanted to discuss this evening is, uh, another gentleman uh, when he finds out that you have other options that you're, that you're dating as well is uh, you have you have Mr. Patience Mr. Patience is the gentleman, he's the brother that is going to play his cards and he's going to wait uh, to see who folds or who throws in the, the throw, you know, who throws in their cards um, and he's just going to be there to take a crack at it when the coast is clear so that's Mr. Patience, he's just waiting everything out this evening um, and not necessarily taking the forefront but you know he's doing he's, he's staying around he's seeing what's what um, but he, he's definitely not taking any risks as far as um, his behavior and things of that nature um, in regards to trying to pursue and get her um, then you have that's my brother type you have um, Mr. Friend type Kia, and I definitely may do that. I may put this in the book. Because, uh, again, this is information that um, women need to know as well. Um, this is my, this is Mr. Friend. This is Mr. My Brother. Um, he is not going to put himself in harm's way as well. Um, he's definitely going to be there to support the sister. Um, He's going to be there for her in hopes that she changes her perspective about him. Okay, yeah, I'm the brother type. Or she's like, oh, I don't view you like that. I view you like my brother. You know, you're my bestie. And things of that nature. So him being who he is to her, he's going to get, this, get a chance firsthand to know a lot about her. And knowing a lot about her, um, He's gonna be that shoulder that she's that you know possibly gonna cry on later, or you know he's gonna just gonna be there for. Her. And um, again, that's more information that he has insight in regards to her to try to get to her heart. <laughs> yeah, um, Eleanor, you're absolutely right. This is a great pretender, um, and I'm gonna talk about him as well. So, and this whole process, this that's my brother, you know, that's my bestie, that's my friend, it's not the third, I don't really like him like that, I ain't interested in him. Um, again, he hopes that at one day, he's gonna be there, um, whether that's for sympathy sex, whether that's for um, break glass in case of emergency, or revenge sex, or something like that, because that's somebody that she's there, she trusts for, um, those type of situations, that's what he's waiting for because, you know, nothing else is going to transpire just in regards to that. So, um, again, um, that's what he's waiting for. 
So um, Eleanor was like the great pretender. The great pretender is the gentleman that um, get the chance to weed and seed and feel her out, ask her questions, and this is not the third. Um, he is just waiting for opportunity. He's going to pretend that, you know, he's somebody that he's not. He's going to be everything that that woman um, dreams are made out of, at least initially, um, until he gets tired of, or he can't continue the facade. Um, and that's going to turn into another situation. Or just to pull her and be like, yo, okay, I got her now, and not necessarily really want her, not want anything to do with her in the first place. And I know for most women, that's very painful to experience. And for most guys, too, because women do it. Women do it. Yes, y'all do. But I never understood what's the point of pretending um, just to get what you want. But you're not necessarily wanting her in a long-term relationship or... Um, somebody to play with uh, something to do and uh, like I said I've been in that situation before and I'm pretty sure at some point um, at some point in your life I, I think we've all played one of those roles at, for some for whatever reason um, whatever that reason is um, you know maybe like I give you an example right there was a um, There was a chick that I really, I was really interested in. She didn't pay me no mind, but her friend did. So in order to get close, get a little bit closer to her, to find out a little bit more about her, to try to get into get into her mind, get into her brain, um, you know, I was hanging out with her friend, and they hung out a lot together. So um, that turned out kind of crazy too, because. They called each other sisters, um, and I end up being, I was actually with both of them at one point in time, um, just through that interaction, and, you know, eventually I just said, like, you know what, that's wrong. I don't know why you even did that. Um, and, you know, they got into a, a real big fight because of me, because, because of my intentions and what I was trying to do. And I shouldn't have been pretending um, to be that person's friend or whatever to get close to this person. Uh, I should have never done that. But that was a lesson learned for me, uh, something that I never done again. Um, so that's crazy. How you doing, D? How you feeling, bro? How you feeling, cuz? Um, and so the next dude that I want to speak and talk about is uh, <laughs> Mr. Overreaction. Mr. Overreacting, I mean, Mr. In His Feelings. Now, this is the type of dude that I know that y'all, like, hate. Um, I don't even like this dude, for real. And when I say he's in his feelings, um, how you doing, Sonata? How you feeling this evening? What I'm saying about Mr. Overreacting, uh, Mr. In His Feelings, is that this man is really... Um, and his feelings. He is the one that is truly hurt by the information that he receives. Um, and I need you to holler at me too um, this evening or tomorrow. Um, I got a couple things I'm trying to run by you. All right. And this man, like he is the one, I mean, he's overly emotional about a woman who has options. Um, and I know, uh, so our, our topic tonight, we're talking about, um, it's an old school kind of topic. Um, we're talking about finding out that you're not the only game in town. And so that basically means that when uh, we're dating, like let's say if we are have, have a great interest in a woman or we're dating, and it's the flip side too, you know, y'all dating there's a guy you like or whatever like that he's dating or whatever and you want to be the only one but or you feel like you're the only one but then you find out that 
he has other options as well. Um, and how people respond and how they react to different types of guys. Um, and it could go for sisters too. I just haven't given them names. <laughs> I haven't given them names yet in regards to it. But um, we, now we're just talking about this gentleman who's just overreactive. Um, you know, we're talking about his feelings and things of that nature. Uh, he's the one who, you know, he's just truly hurt. He's the one that's, you know, crying to his friends, making making the female seem like she's the bad guy for, um, and, you know, for dating other people. And, you know, she ain't really into me like that and all like that. But, again, you know, she was honest and she was truthful and told, told the gentleman that um, it is what it is. You know, right now I'm dating. Um, it's my prerogative. Bobby B, you know what I'm saying? I, I know y'all love that song. I love that song as well. So, he is just the one that's really out there that hasn't accepted the fact that um, he's not number one. And he may not be number one for a long period of time. Um, and he may never be number one. Because what I know is that a woman needs, like, balance. Um, yeah, she wants more of a strong guy, or she's interested in a strong guy. Um, but it has to be balanced, where there's the sense of the side where you're empathetic, you have some compassion, you have, you know, you be able to open and listen to your ears, open up your ears, you be able to listen, some understanding. Um, things of that nature, but this guy really does none of that. You know, he's always crying, he's always complaining, crying, crying, and um, always playing the victim role when somebody doesn't choose him and putting their business all over the place, you know, gossiping, just saying this and saying that the third shit that may be true or not true, or vice versa. And um, that's definitely a guy that, you know, you want to stay away from, whether you date or not, right? I don't even like females like that either. Um, I can understand if I told you, yeah, you know, we're we gonna kick it, we're going we gonna to be one-on-one, -on -one, we're going, you know, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z, and then I don't do it. I get it, I understand it, but look, it, <laughs> um, sometimes things just ain't meant to be. So if there's any other type of gentleman that y'all would like to talk about, put them in the chat box. And I'm going to go uh, freestyle with it. You know what I'm saying? So put them in the chat box. And just in regards to um, what a man finds out that the woman he has an interest in, well, he finds out that he's not the only game in town. So let me ask you all this real quick. So, you know, you were really interested in somebody. And... Um, you found out that the person was dating or they had other options, how would you feel? How, how would you respond? How would you react to the gentleman? Would you give him time? Would you leave? Would you, um, what, what would you do? So that, that, that's what I want to see. Um, just give me some responses in the chat box and uh, the type of, um, if there's any additional type of people that you have come across in your life, um, you know, who may have responded negatively or who may, have, who may have responded in a positive way. I know me for myself, I personally didn't care that if she was dating somebody else. All I asked of her in her time is that when we're together, it's our time. After I leave or after we finish doing what we're doing or we part ways, whatever, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, I don't want no calls from nobody. I don't want no texts from nobody. I don't want any of that. I don't want somebody uh, uh, pulling up to me. Uh, we out on a date, somebody rolling up for me. Um, things of that nature. Because if it happens, um, you know, again, that's a whole situation that's going to be waiting to wait to be seen. Um, Eleanor says, she says, too sensitive makes him appear weak and no woman wants a weak crying man. Facts. That's absolutely true. And again, there has to be some, some type of balance or 
what you need to do in that particular case is state your intent. Talk about what it is that you want. And give the person some time to um, realistically respond to your request. And I mean, that's, that's just the best that you can do. Not that somebody's going to decide on immediately. You know, you want to be saying, oh, um, and you're giving somebody an ultimatum. And, and ladies, I'm going to tell you all the truth. When a man gives you an ultimatum, or, and fellas too, if a woman gives you an ultimatum, and, and, and vice versa, nine times out of ten, it's, it's a wrap. Because I'm not ready, for, for one, I'm not ready to choose right away um, based on somebody else's feelings. I have, to feel, I have to feel mutual, I have to feel the same. And if I'm not there, I'm going to let you know that. I'm not saying I'm not going in your direction, but right here, right now, having this conversation, we, um, we're, we're not on the same page as far as that's concerned. And just because you're not on the same page today, it doesn't mean that in a couple weeks or whatever that it's not going to flow in that direction. But that's based on today. Um, that's not going to happen. How you doing, Mr. Smith? Because it's not going to happen. And ultimatums is the first, I mean, the easiest way for a man or woman to walk out of your life. You might not even have meant it like that, but you just want, I mean, some people play cards, you know what I'm saying? They got that poker face on, like, well, if you, you don't do X, Y, and Z, or you, you don't commit to me today, you don't do whatever, then I'm out. Don't call me no more, don't do X, Y, and Z, blah, 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 blah. And you say, like, damn, for real? Yeah, well, if that's what you really want, all right. And then they wonder why, you know, people don't call them back, or they don't, um, you know, there's nothing else out of that. Because an ultimatum is it's a potential relationship killer or it's a relationship killer, one way or the other. I would say if you say it to somebody, state, state your intent. Like I said before, state your intent and let them know. It's like, hey, look, I'm not there right now. You know, I need some more time from that. I'm getting away to know that. Uh, Eleanor says, my way to hide highway syndrome. Yo, that shit is the worst, for real. Because any relationship, anything that you do, it's a two-way street, family. It's a two-way street. Doesn't always mean that it's your way. And if, um, not that this is personally true, but I've just seen, if you're, if you're giving it somebody's ultimatum, that means that, I mean, you're, 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 you're weak. To give in to somebody else's ultimatum. Now, if I'm wrong, let me know. Because you're feeding into not only their insecurities or maybe their over. Um, usually, when somebody does something like that, they've done this before. Probably eight times out of ten, they got their way. The other 20%, they may not have gotten their way in regards to that. But it's something that they do because they got a response. Either it was a pot, most likely it was probably some positive response. Somebody was, okay, I'm going to chill with you. But when they do that, it only breeds animosity because, for one, you're not ready. I would just say, stand your ground. Stand your ground. And be like, look, I'm not really trying to do, I'm not really trying to, uh, I'm not trying to become your enemy. I'm not trying to become any of those things. But, like I said, I need more time. I need to see more of you. I need to see X, Y, and Z. Um, and everything might not be adding up at the same time. You might meet somebody and, and you know, you might be ready to move across the country. They're not ready for that. They don't want to hear that. So, um, it's a lot of situations I come across in regards to that. Um, Eleanor also said, before I date him, I'm going to ask straight up if he's seen someone. Um, and, and to be frankly honest, y'all, 
I ask the same question. Anybody that have an interest in um, when uh, me and my wife were dating, she asked me, and like I said, I, I asked her. And my response to her was like, I said, yes, I'm dating, but there's no one, there's nothing right now of interest that I'm serious about. But I'm dating you. That was my response. It was a open and transparent response. I didn't have any fear of whether she was going to get up and walk away or uh, whatever that is, but I told her the truth. And that's why I say if the truth, um, the truth is important. Don't lie to have something lingering on and keep moving on and you like, nah, I ain't dating nobody. And then um, your phone blowing up for the rest of the day. She already know you're not telling the truth. Because somebody's trying to get a hold of you. Somebody's trying to see you. And nine times out of ten, it ain't family. It ain't your mama. It ain't your cousin. It ain't none of them. So, um, you know, you got to just respond as honest. No, not as honest, but respond honestly, tactfully. I just said, yeah, I'm dating and what if you was out on a date with somebody uh, with options or disregarding them? It was like, yeah, I'm dating and aren't you dating? Okay, yeah, whatever. We good, man. We spending time, man. But all this to say is that um, I want everybody uh, that's here in the chat room, everybody out there out here this evening, just to um be more open, honest, and transparent when we talk about um, when you, whether you find, whether you know she's dating or not. You may have met her and she may just gave you the number and you went on about your way. You didn't have time to ask pertinent questions, you know, immediately. And okay, you were like, yeah, you know, she, she hot or he hot. Um, and this is, again, this is a weed and seed process. You need to ask the appropriate questions, whether they like your questions or not, or you too inquisitive. Oh, you want to know my blood type too? Yes, I do. Well, what is your blood type? Because it might not be corresponded to um, my family bloodline. It always might not mess your mix. You know, that's that's a that's an easy. Um, okay, yeah, we, yeah, we just want to stay friends. Um, Aubrey says everybody, meaning a single person, has a maintenance professional that can be put on furlough when you meet the right one. Um, and I guess I, I definitely do agree because a lot of things change for me. Um, when our connection started to build, it's almost like things started happen naturally. Um, you know, some of my behavior, some of my things um, changed. More of my attention was focused here as opposed to here, 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 here. And I, when I say I had that, I did, I did have here, 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 here. But there was nothing that I could focus on, something that grabbed my attention, like your favorite TV program or um, something that you really, that, that something, that, something that you'll binge watch. That's what I can, I can compare it to. Um, Kia says, that's the key, being open and honest and not afraid to ask the hard questions. Um, and like I said, I agree with that a thousand percent because when, if you don't ask, I said ask, I got a list for, that's uh, that's a, no, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping y'all. <laughs> so you have to ask the hard questions early on. It doesn't matter when, uh, it's just like, your there's really no right and wrong time to tell somebody anything either you're going to tell them or you're not a lot of people withhold a lot of information too um you know you think they're like this or they're, they're this type of person and then they're, they're not that person at all so 
Um, again, it's very important for you when you have the time to talk to that person, whether it's a short period of time, get in as many questions as you can. Um, and that, that'll, help, that'll definitely help you to weed and see um, on whether I'm gonna continue talking to this person, what category that you place them in, um, and, how, and how much energy you put towards that person in this capacity or not. Um, And so with that being said, family, it's the, I really just think that, you know, um, just being open, honest, and transparent um, will get you in the right places at the right time. Um, if you're open, honest, and transparent, and the person doesn't necessarily agree or like what you say, if they not for you, let them go. Um, focus your energy elsewhere. Go meet somebody else. Um, uh, I know a friend of mine the other day was just speaking about how um, he was going through some things in his life and, you know, he don't want to, you know, continue to put himself out there or, you know, um, get himself out there and get his heart hurt. And I just told him, it's like, look, you know, every day we walk out this door is a gamble. Every day we go to work, every day, whatever we go outside to do, life is a gamble um, take some time get yourself together but just don't go don't go meet somebody immediately and um, you still feel in some kind of way about your current dismissal relationship or the breakup right just give yourself some time to be able to sit down and, and get yourself together and heal but continue man listen all these all these beautiful fish out here in this sea there's definitely somebody for you. You know, you, you just have to get back out there, get back in the water, start swimming again, you know? Um, I've never been one not to swim. I've never been afraid of any type of commitments or whether somebody was dating multiple people. Um, I never was afraid of anything like that. I just always felt like I was the catch. You know, I was the winner. Um, I was a gentleman, you know, I had a lot to offer, a lot of good things too. Every time, you got, every time I got knocked down or something happened or you dating, because um, basically that's what dating is. Dating and being in relationships to me is act is actually, um, it's practice. It's helping me to come, it's giving me more learning lessons to be able to become a better person. I'm, I'm being a better person. When other relationships and things come along, I'll be able to see something 10 miles away as opposed to just waiting until it gets like, right in front of my face, you know, to see certain things. Um, so, it's, just, it's, it's actually practice. If you practice right, you practice correctly, you will, um, you're always gonna be, you, you're, you're, you're always gonna be in line to um, meet that right person. And somebody's gonna accept you for who you are, where you are. And a lot of times too, when we're dating, we um, we expect certain things from people. I think our expectations as well, um, especially with somebody with options, just as well as you. Um, we should, our expectations, um, I'm not saying to lower them, share them, but, but don't put them on somebody. Yeah, show them what your expectations are, but don't put them on them like they need, they have to do this. Um, and again, we're, we're each individuals. And, uh, you know, uh, sometimes people don't know, they don't know how to do, act or respond uh, to a lot of different situations. Um, is because they've never been in that situation before, or they never had somebody with your expectations or... Um, they haven't had enough learning lessons in life or enough relationships to be able to balance the two and be like, okay, that's something great or positive for me, or yeah, I can I can give that to you or not. Um, Eleanor says, I've been wounded a few times, but I didn't die, I survived. Absolutely. Um, life is only gonna make you stronger, but it's your choice. You choose how strong you get, but is it a constructive strong? Or is it a destructive strong? Because some people 
can build and put a wall around themselves and uh, it's this brick and mortar around them, full metal jacket around them. Anything that comes their way, knocking them down without a care in the world. You got hurt, so you hurt them. Um, to have that type of attitude or it's building up a wall around yourself, you know, you can't um, think that that's going to be a great way to meet somebody or a great way to attract or keep somebody. Now, somebody will stick around because you may look good, your shape, your body may look, ooh, like she hot, he on fire, but they're not going to stay around for that. And that's going to, again, that's going to cause more hurt because um, they're like, I'm going to stay around long enough to get what I get, I'm get what I would like that, then I'm out because, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Aubrey says, you can meet someone on your level if you're not, if you're not honest about where you are. Um, I just say if I mean, I've, I've, I've had a balance with that but my practice is I, I don't practice it anymore but even when I was in the process of dating and I happened to um, be friends for years with my wife before you know we actually got together is that um, women oh okay I'm sorry, let me, he says, he said, you can't meet someone on your level if you're not honest about where you are. Yeah, that's, that's the absolute truth. And uh, again, you have to have that balance um, within yourself. Like, I don't want to give off that energy, like, in my mind, or emotionally, I might feel like, oh, you know, I'm ready for this relationship and it's not going to hurt, but you're still hurting, you're still grieving, you're still carrying animosity from a previous relationship. And guess who that's going to fall on? Or guess who that's going to be pushed on? Those be, look, you going to hand those bags to somebody else. You can keep throwing them at somebody else. And they're going to be like, oh. <laughs> so, you know, you definitely got to get rid of that baggage. Um, whether they're dating or not, whether you're dating or not, is just, you know, the acceptance of the situation and giving time. And you have time to get to know and understand that other person. Um, lessons of life. You learn and apply, and that's been my path. You learn and apply. Um, I know if I didn't want to go through certain things anymore, I happen to backtrack and move on my own way. You know what I'm saying? Um, just don't stick and stay in situations that's not going to be conducive to you growing, healing, um, anything that's going to get bring you out of character, or either you get stronger, or just leave the situation. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, there's a lot of folk out there. Um, and you just have to get out there and do your due diligence and work, but also protect yourself, protect your heart, protect your temple. Um, and it is what it is. So with that being said, for the Knight family, uh, that was my final thought. Um, and my, actually, actually, that was my final thought and encouraging word for you all this evening. Um, and again, I would just say, um, just be open and honest be fearless get out there and do what you do family and uh, you know just if you don't have the intent to hurt somebody or whatever like intentionally you know you'll actually be good with all this um, I'm just trying to think right now and also what I want to do too if, um, if there's anything that you guys have that are coming up if you want to put it in the box of your platform any events or uh, any uh, sharing of information that you would like to put out there anything that you learn um, thank you Eleanor I definitely enjoyed conversating with you all and your feedback and um, you know just hanging out with me uh, for an hour um, uh, tomorrow I have an event uh, tomorrow for an hour and a half which is great uh, I'm just going to be talking about um, talking about my book, Open Wounds, uh, talking about me as an author and as a publisher, uh, and just answering all questions in regards to myself uh, that the uh, uh, that the book club has in regards to that. So if you have any book clubs that would like to um, interview an author or um, talk about his book, send me that at issuesofmen at gmail.com, and uh, you know, I'll definitely respond and get with them. 
Um, and there's so much great things going on right now in my life. Uh, things seem to be moving. I mean, this moving 2021 it started off with a blast. Um, uh, wow, I'm gonna have some great interviews coming up soon. Um, and I'm also, so I need some songwriters or people who are interested in writing songs and things of that nature. Um, so I'm launching an, inter um, an entertainment company, um, March of 2021. And um, I'm definitely going to start with uh, we, you know, uh, with songwriting and getting my songs out there. I have books of songs that have never seen the light of day. Uh, some of the artists that I've chosen in the past uh, to um, to sing these songs, you know, every time something happened in their lives, um, negative or whatever, uh, you know, girlfriend or a guy, his girlfriend broke up with him. Um, they never had that oomph or that drive to say, okay, you know, although they broke up with me, I'm going to keep going through, I'm going to keep doing whatever, I'm going to keep moving with the songwriting movement, or I'm, I'm going to sing, I'm going to sing this song. Uh, so whatever reaches its full potential. I was supposed to take uh, singing classes and things like that, but I never had the opportunity. Not saying I didn't have the opportunity, I just didn't have, I didn't do it. There were other things that were going on. You know, you got family, I had school, and a lot of things going on, but I'm telling you, for 2021, um, there's a lot of things that I haven't done that I put on the back burner, um, rediscover some of my passions, and so I'm going to move forward with a lot of this stuff this year. So um, even with production, I'm learning new, um, um, again, I'm sharpening my craft as far as the publishing, offering, offering publishing services. I'm learning new software uh, in regards to um, music and things like that so a lot of things behind the scenes I'm spending a lot of time on um, working a part-time job and listen it's like you're working hard tirelessly right now I don't feel like I'm 50 but I love to be 50 because whatever happened something did change I have a you have a stick shift I have the extra shift the extra gear the six seven gear that's what I'm into right now and um, I'm launching that uh, coming 2021 Again, um, if you would like to support the growth of this platform, um, you can donate to Cash App at Dollar Sign Ascension Services. Um, and again, I said I want to thank my son too for uh, he um, for my birthday. He had brought me a mic and mic filter and also a software uh, to be able to manipulate the um, you know your sound and your voice. Like I'm just speaking through here right now, but you know when I get everything together, you're gonna see me speaking through a microphone. Um, what has some different backgrounds, uh, you know, um, so it's a lot of different things I'm doing. I'm trying to build this platform and um, take it where it needs to go. Um, I do have issues of men t-shirts. Um, if you go to www.authorchrisallen.com, uh, uh, you could order issues of men t-shirts. Uh, you can also, uh, if you have not purchased or gotten a book, you can also do that there as well. Um, and next week topic, um, TBA to be announced or uh, to be determined a TBD um, there's a couple that actually came up and uh, I haven't chose which one it will be but uh, I'll definitely be here next week um, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time the issues of men and uh, I put that out early sometime next week uh, several times next week and um, definitely I hope to see you again um, and if you would like to provide a topic for the show, um, email me at the issues of men at gmail.com or if you have my number 804-464-8479, uh, just put in the uh, subject line or whatever that is or the text that say, um, you know, IOM conversation topic, put the topic in and give it like a small synopsis of uh, what you would like me to address or talk about. And um, I, I would also be able to, you know, if you would like to become a guest on the show, holler at me. Don't be afraid, male or female. This is a male and female show, family. So um, I definitely love that the females are participating because not only are learning a little bit more about men and things that are going on with men, um, you know, your relationships and the way that you perceive men and how you move in life will be, can also be better um, because you're here and we're talking about important topics and conversations. So, um, you know, if you learn, teach one. You know what I mean? 
So with that being said, I'm about to close out for this evening. I appreciate each and every one of you for coming out to hang out with me tonight. And uh, again, issuesofmen at gmail.com. Uh, also, uh, go to uh, subscribe uh, to my YouTube page, the IOM Issues of Men. Um, there, there may be similar ones that come up in the Google search or YouTube search, but y'all know the crescent. Y'all know the crescent sign, you know, with the crimson, uh, the crimson black and white. That's me all day, er day. Um, so with that being said, family, I love you. Um, are you living constructively? Come, mm, constructively or are you living destructively? Um, I love you. See you next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the issues of men. Um, and fellas, also, um, I really need y'all to send me your schedules and your time um, on when we can get in with these other types of conversations that I have on Anchor, and I'm also going to upload them to my YouTube page as well. Um, there are certain things that I can say and talk about here, but not the way we do them um, in private conversation. So, with that being said, issuesofmen at gmail.com, 804-464-8479. Uh, I love y'all. I'll see y'all next week. Y'all have a good one. Peace.